Okay. Uh, the one that you've already done is called the intermediate value theorem. Uh, that's used more for just functions. You're not taking derivatives or anything. As you can see by the title here, we are going to take a look at what's called the mean value theorem today. Uh, it's, it's very similar in its idea uh, and actually very similar in how you go about it. So you may or may not uh, remember from section 2.3, because it was a long time ago, the intermediate value theorem, which basically stated all of this. This is the type of stuff, though, that you're going to want to start to be able to translate. So he says we have some function that's y equals something, right? That is continuous, and that means no holes, no asymptotes. You could draw it, right, without picking up your pencil. On a closed interval, a, b. So does that mean the whole graph has to be continuous? No, just wherever you're looking, right? Wherever they tell me a and b, maybe it's from 1 to 5, who knows? But where I'm looking, is it including 1 and 5 according to this? Mm -hmm. Because it's a bracket, right? Takes on every value between, now notice what they did is they took this x value and put it in the function. So is this an x value right there, or does it end up being a y value? A y value, right? So basically your points are a comma f of a, right? x, y. And your other point is b, f of b, right? This notation is huge to understand this. If you're going to go out there and take some classes, know that f of b, this y value here, because okay? it's y equals f of x, right? And the x's I'm choosing are a and b. All these variables, right? They're everywhere. Uh, in other words, if y sub 0, see how y sub 0 right here? It just means some y value. Is between those y values, then there has to be at least one c value that's between a and b. So do you believe the little graph that I showed you? Does this little graph follow all the rules up here? Is it continuous from A to B? Does it take on every single value from A to B? Yeah. Well, and every value between there. <laughs> Does it take every value between, say, here and there? At least once. Does it take on some of them more than once? Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It just has to take them all on once. It could take all of them on 100 times for all we care, but it has to at least take them on once. Okay. So then do you agree if there is some y, maybe this y value here is 1, and maybe this y value is, because we're better with numbers, right? Let's face it. Most people are. Let's say that's a value of 1 and that's a value of 6. I'll give you some numbers here, okay? And let's say A is, let's say 1, and B is just 1. So what, what's this point right, right? Well, it's not really there, but... You get my idea. This point is, what, what do you want y0 to be then? Two. two? So this point right there, I missed a little, didn't I? Well, you get the idea, right? You know what I meant. All right. So this point's really what? One comma two, right? Everybody okay with that? All right. And then this point B, how far do you think that is? Three. Three? Okay. Then C, a logical value would be two, right? Now, are we guaranteed the values are this nice? No, I'm just trying to get the idea. So basically, if I give you, if I know it's continuous on where I'm looking, and I know it takes on every value then, right? And so if I told you, oh, this is good from 1 to 3, and you knew the y values were from 1 to 6, if I asked you to find some y value that had a 2, should you be able to find an x value that would make that happen? Yeah, at least 1. Is it possible more than 1 would do it? Yeah, and in this case, more than 1 does, right? This one does, and where's the other one? Mm, yeah. About there, right? Yeah. So I missed with my C, but you get the idea. If you know it's continuous, basically, with whatever Y value in that range I ask you for, you should find at least one X value that gives you that Y value. At least one. Okay. What's the simplest case of this? Does that meet the criteria? Is it continuous? So if I give you any y value in there, let's say this one, that's the y value. Is there some x value that gives it to you? There has to be. You see, that's the simplest case. Obviously, you get more complex and start doing things like this, you know. But, but yeah, the general idea is that it would be there, correct? And that's what we did back in section two three, apparently, according to these notes. Well, now we're going to take this to a slightly different point. 
This is the mean value theorem for derivatives. And what do derivatives really deal with? Slope, right? Change in, change in, uh, change in y over change in x, I guess you'd say. Um, rate of change. So once again, if that y equals f of x, isn't this starting the same way? It's continuous. Isn't that the same thing we just said? At every point on the, isn't this like the exact same wording? So far, on every point from a to b, uh-oh, there's something a little bit new. Now, here's where your vocab comes in. What does it mean to be differentiable? You can take that derivative. That's what it means. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things you can take the derivative of, right? So where are some places that cause it to not be differentiable? That would be your, what's that? Uh, Endpoints, spikes, yeah, holes, yeah, all those things, right? Discontinuities is a good sum up of that, but the one we do have to throw in there is kind of the endpoints. But a good thing they didn't include A and B when they said differentiable then. Oh, look at that. It's like they're smart or something. Then there is at least one point in there at which Whoa. What? It does look like slope, doesn't it? Because really, remember, use the notation. What is this? A y value, right? That corresponds to, oh, look at that, that x value. How about that? And this is just another y value that corresponds to, isn't that the formula for slope you've been doing since, I don't know, 7th grade, 6th grade, 8th grade? I don't know when you started doing it. Right? That's just a general formula for slope right there, isn't it? And what that's the slope of is, do you agree? Oh, what's that called again? Okay, I don't know why I made that so quick. It's just like I wanted to really emphasize it or something. I don't really know. It's a secret line. Very good word. And they're trying to come up with the other one that I want you to say. It's not instantaneous rate of change. It's Average rate of change. Very good. So those would be the two key. That is the secant line right there in green. It's also the average rate of change from A to B. Very good. So you figured out the right side. Excellent job. You figured out the right side. See this translation? It's not that bad once you just get out all the notation. But we've yet to figure out that. Well, it has a prime on it, doesn't it? What does prime mean? Derivative. Oh, they're saying I can put in some c value, and c has to be where? Between a and b. That'll give me the same answer as this. That's what the equal sign means, right? So wait a minute. They're saying there's one point along the way that will have that exact same slope as that green line. Just one point. So it goes from the right side is talking about average rate of change. The left side is talking about instantaneous. So do you see a point somewhere along the way, and we're guaranteed at least one. There could be 100. Who knows? Again, with that crazy blue one I drew on the last one, there could be 100. Do you see a point anywhere along the way that would have that exact same slope? Pretty close to where C is, right? I, I did a lot better job on this one than I did on the last one. Okay. Do you agree that these two slopes are the same of those two green lines. You're guaranteed for it to happen once. Okay. Now, the reason they want it to be differentiable is what if you had one of these crazy spikes? Well, if I kept going, it would be mu, yeah. That's your average, right? Does that happen anywhere along the way? It doesn't, does it? Because is it differentiable everywhere? Where does it cause problems? Yeah, right there. Causes huge problems. What if you have some kind of asymptote in between there? Hey, average rate of change. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That doesn't work. So do you see why differentiable is? Is important and so is continuous. It's very important. 
So what criteria would a problem have to meet to be approved, I would say, by the mean value theorem? It must be continuous on any point you're looking at. If that spike or asymptote happens somewhere else, who cares? Where I'm looking, is it good? And if it is, you're fine. And then, is it differentiable kind of also inside where I'm looking? Do I care about the endpoints? No, because you can never really differentiate endpoints. Because remember, it's slope coming from both directions. That's no good. Okay, but can endpoints be absolute maximums? Yeah, okay, so watch out. Then there exists at least one where the slopes will be the same. Instantaneous and average will be exactly. Or the secant line and the tangent line. Okay, that's sometimes the hardest part about calculus. There's so many names for things. People really just thought they came up with something impressive, so they had to give it a new name. But somebody had already done it, and so it doesn't really matter. Do both of them make sense? This is basically just talking about a y value and an x value, correct? This is talking about an x value and a slope. But do you see how they're really talking about the same thing? Okay. Let's try one. Determine whether or not the following function satisfies the hypothesis, let's just say the if part, of the mean value theorem on the given interval. And if it does, then calculate the value of C in the interval, AB, that satisfies the equation. Notice I don't have what on AB here? Don't have brackets. Okay, because it has to be inside because that's where you're looking for differentiable, right? So, whoa. Uh, what do you think about uh, that x minus 2 squared plus 3? Is that going to be continuous on 1 to 4? Would it have really asked where I asked you about that one? Isn't that a parabola that's been moved right 2 and up 3? So isn't that continuous everywhere? How about that being differentiable? Are there any asymptotes, spikes, anything like that in there? No, that's good, right? So let's just get a little graph of that thing in there. So remember, it moves it right two and up three. And which way does it open? Up. All right, so it looks relatively like that, correct? See, this is where all those sketches come in handy, because would we have really wanted to sit here and do an XY table and figure this thing out? But it's taking too long. I just want you to get the idea of calculus. I don't want you to sit here and graph this thing all day. And plus, you got calculators that do it for you anyways. But I hope you can sketch this one faster and you can type it into a calculator. I'm only concerned about one, two, three, whoa, why did I do it like that? Four, right? So basically, if I wanted to, would I be allowed to just erase that other stuff? If I wanted to, right? Do you have to? No, you don't have to. So, does it satisfy the hypothesis? Continuous differentiable. Are we good? Ah, we're good. So now we got to figure this thing out. Okay, so what do you suppose would be a logical first step? Okay, sure, we can do that. We know the derivative is part of it, right? I would have done something else first, but that's fine, that still works. Well, we're going to have to do what I would have done anyway, so. Uh-oh, what do we got to do for derivative here? Oh, chain rule, which means put the 2 out front. X minus 2, take it down a power, right? It was a 2 up here, so now make it a... One. And let's not forget this part of chain rule is very insignificant in this case. Uh, but you got to take the derivative of the inside, which, why is it insignificant this time? Because it's 1, right? And then how about this plus 3? What's the derivative of that? 0. So are we done with the derivative? Well, that was nice, huh? Way better than some of the derivatives you've been doing, right? So we can even clean this up if we wanted to, right? Do you want to? It's up to you. I don't care. Okay, so uh, 2x uh, minus 4, right, is your derivative. Now, why did you want to take the derivative? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, we had to find some kind of slope, right? But are we looking for critical values here? Is that what this mean value theorem is talking about? No, what it's talking about is basically there's somewhere place where the secant line will be equal to a tangent line, the same slope, right? So what would probably be very important to find? What is that actual slope? We're trying to go from... 1 comma, 1, 2, well, what is it actually? 1 comma, put it in there. What's the actual value? 1 in. 
1 comma 4? How good did I do? Ah, pretty good, huh? 1 comma 4 to? Because we need the secant line. The green line on top. We need this one. We need to know what slope we're looking for. Because if we don't know what slope we're looking for, well then we're stuck. And it's 4 comma 7. How good did I do? Not too bad, right? Not horrible. We need to know that slope. How do you go about finding that slope? So it's 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 7. I'm hoping you can find that slope. Well, that's something that we've done a lot of, right? You would do 7 minus 4 over 4 minus 1. 3 over 3. How come I put change in y on top? Yeah, I guess that's what you're supposed to do, exactly. Uh, and in this case, would it have really mattered, or would you have just gotten really lucky? Yeah, you would have gotten really lucky even if you messed up on this one. It's still 1. So how do you write that? How do you write that your slope is 1? Yeah, probably m equals 1, right? Now, here's the part that some of you are struggling with. What do we do with that information? Is x equaling 1? Is that what x equals? That's what m equals, correct? Where in this derivative, where in there does something actually stand for slope? Yeah, right here is where something actually stands for slope. What does that x stand for? It stands for x. What x value? And isn't that what I'm looking for? The x value that guarantees that slope? So what am I going to replace this f prime of x that I just circled in red? Y1. That's the slope of the secant line, or the average rate of change. So replace it with 1. And of course, we reviewed the other day that we're not going to just factor out the 2 and set it equal to 1, right? That's not OK. That only works when you set it equal to 0, right? So let's go ahead and add the 4. This is getting really low on the board here. So what do we got there? 5 equals 2x. So x equals? I have so x equals two and a half. So what? We found an x value. What does it mean? You could. I just want the x value, though. Value of c, that stands for x in these problems. Because this is basically a, b, or c. What, what does it mean? Yeah. Exactly. That's where the secant and tangent line have the exact same slope. We are guaranteed it happens at least once. Okay. So where's 2.5? Two, two and a half? Right about there? Tangent line? Is it believable? What if I would have gotten an answer of like one and a half? Would that have been believable if I would have tried to throw the tangent line in here? No, they're not even close to the same. What if I tried to throw it at, say, one, two, three and a half? Is that believable if I would have put the tangent line over here? No. Is it believable where we're at? Yes. Okay. Where are the two the same? Any one step here overly difficult? Not really. Because okay, you're, you're smart enough. You took that derivative real fast. Okay. Yes? Yep. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we were guaranteed that is because it was differentiable everywhere we were looking and continuous everywhere we were looking. Remember, spikes, asymptotes, all bets off. Okay. I was looking down here for my thing, and it's up here. Right in the way now. Now, what do you suppose I would have done first? You asked, what, you asked me, well, what would you have done first? Yeah, I would have put the points in and found the slope I was looking for. Okay. But did it really matter that we did that second? Not really. Okay. But then I at least knew what slope I was looking for. So, All right. Well, what do you think about this graph? This is, once again, a, a parent graph. It's a little bit harder one, though. In fact, I'm going to have to probably help you a little bit with transforming this one. Um, this is one that I don't. It's not a parabola because of the square root on it. Uh, this is one I don't focus a lot in on advanced math. Um, but 
do you agree the squaring on the inside takes care of any negatives, correct? And then you take the square root. It kind of cancels out, right? But there's a slight problem. Um, <laughs> it's funny how I say this so much that I refer to the other classes. Those of you in stats know another way of doing that. In stats, we, we square things and take the square root so we get one answer. Yeah, the first standard deviation. There's another way of taking care of negatives. It's more of the median version of taking. Yeah, absolute value. Um, this is something you're going to want to take some good notes on because this will, it won't happen on the test, but this will happen in college a lot. They'll expect you just to know it. When you have a square and a square root, you'll agree negatives kind of get ignored in a way. And so what really happens, I told you just to houseify all this time. That was just to get you close to the answer. What really happened is that. That's truly how even roots cancel. So if you had the fourth root and a fourth power on the inside when they cancel, there's an absolute value. How about a third root and a third power? No absolute value. You don't need it. Because third roots can be negative. But yeah, the negatives take care of themselves. But any even power, so maybe write that off to the side. I would if I were you. Even, even power. Yeah. For example, this one. Same thing. Cancels to an absolute value of x plus 1. But that just flat out house buys. Now imagine if I tried to explain that to you in Algebra 2. Housifying was difficult enough, I think, in Algebra 2. Exactly. So that's why I save it for here. Thank you. But good thing that leads you is this, if I was planning ahead, that leads you to a parent graph. What was the absolute values parent graph? A v, right? And how am I moving this V? Right two up three. Here's again me expecting you to remember stuff from other classes. Is this V still opening up? Yep. And again, we only care about. Is everybody okay with how I got the blue graph there? How I moved it to here? Probably the hardest part was knowing that it cancels to that. And zero to four. Does it meet the hypothesis of the mean value theorem? Is it continuous all the way from A to B, including A and B? Is it continuous? Is it differentiable from A to B? No. So can I even try this? No. because It's not going to work, and here's why it won't work. Where's your average rate of change is that, right? Does that ever happen? No. Doesn't. Now, some of you are saying, doesn't it happen at the bottom? Well, not really, because this one's going that way. This one's going, it doesn't. That one never gets taken care of. That one's never happened. Okay. So this one, no, it doesn't meet the mean value theorem. And you can probably just abbreviate like this. I think almost any math teacher at a higher level will know what MVP means. Or MVT, excuse me. They'll know what MVP means, too, but... I don't know what MVT is. It's mean value theorem if you're not sure. Everybody know that? I'm sorry. Are we good? All right. Oh, piecewise, everybody's favorite. getting fired up. All right, x to the third plus three. Oh, hey, at least they're parent graphs. All right, x to the third plus three, but that's only when x is less than one. Uh, unfortunately, that's in my range, isn't it? And so is this other one. Ah, oh, always look for that. If it's not in your range, don't even graph it. All right, so x to the third plus three when x is less than one. Well, what if you put one in exactly? What happens? One comma four, but it is a whole. Very good. So 1, 1, 2, 3. Now, how do you know it was a whole? Yeah, not equal to. All right? And so you, you don't graph that. 
And what does x to the third look like again in general? Yeah, a little, little thing, looking thing. Uh, and so it's supposed to be up three, right? So it'd be right about there. So it would look something like that, and it would keep going normally, but it'll just stop, right? Now, how did I know where this little point was? Well, you just move up three, right? And that's where it's supposed to start changing direction and have a point of inflection. As if all these classes run together or something. Yeah. What's this? Parabola moved up one. But I can't graph that particular part, right? I should start it right here, right? That's where it should be a big old parabola. How come I can't graph that point for the red one? Yeah, it's not part of the piece here, right? And so what you should probably do, and I've told you this, and some of you have followed my directions and some of you have not, when you get piecewise, worry about these points. Plug them in. Find out where they are. Put one in there. Where are you at? Two. Should I fill it in or not? Fill it in. And let's face it, if I'm supposed to start here, we all kind of have a general idea of what the parabola is going to do, right? And so you know it just does something kind of like that, right? Give or take, right? But let's keep in mind that point. Not even there, right? That was just me showing you. All right. But only, is everybody okay with the graphing of the piecewise there? All right. Only from zero to two, though, huh? So from zero to two. We have huge problems. It's neither continuous nor differentiable. But what if I would have asked somewhere else? Are there a lot of intervals I could have asked you for here that would have worked? A lot of them, right? For example, could I have asked you from, say, negative 3 to 0? And would you have been able to use the mean value here? Could I have asked you from, say, um, 2 to 7? Mm, okay. Here's an interesting one. 1 to 7. Could I have asked you 1 to 7? Okay. Some said yes, some said no, and that's about what I wanted, to be honest with you. I wanted some discussion here. From 1 to 7, including 1 to 7, it has to be continuous, correct? Is it? Is from 1 to 7, is it continuous? Yeah, 1's included. It's right here, right? 1 to 7, that's the only one that includes. Differentiable is only in between. It doesn't count the endpoints. So can you do 1 to 7? Yeah, you can. Okay. Can you then do, here's the next question, can you do negative 3 to 1? Yeah, because there's a big hop at 1, right? So you can't, because it's not continuous all the way to 1, because there's a hole there, right? So watch out for that. So are there any questions? So again, this is a no, you can't use the mean value there. Okay. Do you understand? Again, please realize it only guarantees you 1, but if your graph starts getting a little bit crazier, let's say there's the two points I asked you about. Is that slope going to happen a few times along the way? I sure hope so. Okay, It's going to happen several times from here to there. That particular exact same slope is going to happen several times. Okay. I think most of them I give you is only going to happen once. Okay. Do you have any questions?